Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord to God. I greet the brethren, the ones who are present here in the church, and also the ones who are following us online with, with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I invite the church to stand up in reverence to a reading of the word, which is located in the book of Revelations. Revelations 3. We're going to read from verse 11. We're going to start on verse 11. Revelations 3, verse 11. Amen. Nobody says amen, right? <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can recognize my voice. I travel so much. And that's all right. They asked me to preach today, so I'm here. Just hold on, right? Revelation 3, 11 says the following. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in my temple of my God. And he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven for my God, and I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The church may be seated. My brethren, we have studied a lot about this book called Book of Revelations. In the last few days, I've spoken a lot about this. And the ones who are researching, they are reading, the ones who are, are absorbing the teaching, they are learning in depth what the Lord has for His church. The book of Revelations in English it says the following Revelation it shows to us something that is completely different than what we see out there in the world man away from God with selfish interests they describe they actually try to pass on the image of the book of Revelations with us the end the end of everything right so they make movies revelate uh, apocalypse destruction atomic war that disaster all the destruction destruction death the end of the world but however what God has shown to us it is that the book of Revelations is a book that is preparing the church a book that was written by a man a man called John but the authorship of it it comes from eternity and it is a book that shows to us what God has particularly for the church for your life you who entered here tonight so the book of revelations as we study as we as the revelations of God are uh, um, being unveiled to us and as you go deeper in the teaching of the book you will see that it is a wonderful book it's not a book that needs to cause fear that was written to cause fear no it was a book that shows to us something that only the faithful church is able to keep which is the promise of God those are the revelations of God and the mysteries of God 
geared towards men. Inside of is what is the project of God. The first three chapters of the book of Revelations, John was was exiled on the island of Patmos. Let's go. In the year 83 after Christ, John, because he was a preacher of the word, because he was a witness that Jesus had died and that on the third day he had resurrected, John simply, just because he proclaimed this, because he spoke about this, the word says that he was in prison a couple of times, and now in the, a, in the year 83, he was sentenced to live in exile in this isle, island called Patmos. This island exists to this day. So when you, when you research, if you go do a little tourism in the Sea of Greece, you can go to this island. The same difficulties, they remain to this day. Because it, was, it is an island that, that has no trees. It's very difficult, even water needs to be carried to that place by ship. So this island was used for this and criminals, the prisoners, they were sentenced to live in this island until they died. So John now, when he begins to have his experience with the revelation of God, the church now was already 50 years old, more or less. Jesus 33 years, 50, more 50 years. 50. So the church had already advanced through Asia and has, had grown. The word of God was being preached and proclaimed. The persecutions, they were there. The Christians, the servants of God, being sent, being judged, being treated in a way in persecution being crucified a few even say that they they were running out of wood to there was not enough wood to crucify so many Christians so it began a moment it was very difficult exactly at the beginning of the church when the beginning of the gospel being proclaimed a persecution and killing you know what it was the end was the end was to stop the proclamation of the gospel to stop this message that Jesus had died but he was alive now John in this island away from everyone away from his family members and John here he was the last apostle that stayed with Jesus throughout Jesus walks when Jesus was preaching, doing Jesus' ministry. John was the, l the only one, the only connection, the only person that was linked to the church, was connecting the church to the time of Jesus directly. So when he was with Jesus, he was young. The word says that he was very a very dear person. Because maybe because he was so young, he was very close to Jesus. The Bible shows this when he writes the book of John. It shows this. But now the word tells us that in this island, John had an experience that changed his life. That Jesus he knew, that Jesus he saw many times sleeping in the caves. On the, the gaps that existed on the rocks, on those places, Jesus didn't have a place to rest. He didn't have a house. Just in the last few years of his life, doing this ministry, Jesus, he was in haste to do the work of the Father. And John saw this Jesus many times being rejected, being persecuted, being mistreated being ignored 
and now when John in this difficult situation alone in prison John now had an experience where he saw the Lord Jesus in the first book of Revelations it shows to us it describes to us how he how Jesus appeared to him it was no longer the same Jesus it was now the Jesus that appears to John with a glorified body as a God a glorified body means in the form as in the form of, as a, a victorious one the one who died but overcame death the one who was truly alive already in the presence of John and the Lord speaks to John and says John write the letters to the church Church of Asia who have studied this the seven letters that comprise the church that Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamo, Tyre, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea that to this day those cities they still exist the ones that can go visit Turkey they can go there visit where the gospel had its beginnings and our John and Jesus Jesus begins to dictate to him what needed to be told in the church of Pergamos in the church of Smyrna on those seven churches Peter didn't know did John know that the project of God for his life was a project that these letters should go to the church John did not know this the word tells us that the story says that John remained for four years in this island and then he went back to the church and there John was able to testify of what was the project of God in his life John had a conversation with Jesus from the fourth book onward John now he's taken up to heaven and now he began to see things that no one else had seen he saw the throne he saw heaven the streets of gold what God has prepared for man what God has prepared for us we who are here tonight and what God has prepared for your life you went here tonight without this assurance of salvation without having any opportunity maybe you are here like John alone feeling like you have been forsaken in isolation you feel like John outside away from your family away from an environment that may bring a comfort but my brethren the text says the following behold I am coming quickly hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown I read the word of God for us tonight is exactly this one keep what you have and what you have the most precious in our life and is our experience with God because what man can keep forever that never runs out no it's not going to wear out ever is his own experience with God is what you are living is what you lead in the presence of God because the thing of greatest worth that we have is the Word of God is the doctrine is what gives us strength is what gives a point of reference it is what shows to us where we came from where we are and where we're going to because John when he was there taken by the Holy Spirit when he was raptured he saw the church in heaven, in heaven already victorious and that's what God has for us this is what God has for your life tonight you entered here tonight God yes he can change your destination God can change the situation in which you are God yes he has power for tonight to reveal himself to you not as a, a God uh, that has been betrayed or 
mistreated, no. But as a God is victorious. In the same way that John saw the Lord, his head with his white hair, his feet like like a polished brass, and his voice like the voice of many waters. This is the Jesus. He's here tonight. This is the Jesus that we, as a church, as servants of God, we we can offer this Jesus to you. It is not the Jesus that died. No, and remained dead was forgotten. No, it is a Jesus that is victorious. A Jesus it, it has an appearance of God. A Jesus that came, came to stay. So tonight, the Lord has this for us. The joy that we have in knowing that of one thing, that soon Jesus will return. And when this happens, we will enter into the New Jerusalem. We will see truly what God has for us. And everything that we spoke, spoke have spoken, everything that we experienced is not only a story. It's not a story from Hollywood. A good story from Revelations. No. We are here because Jesus truly has something for his church. And we are witnesses of this. We are witnesses of this because the Lord has already changed our destination. Has revealed himself to us. One day, like John, we had our own experience with, with the Lord. And today we are here because what we desire the most is to keep our crown. To keep our call. And to have our assurance and our guarantee that no matter what happens in the world, we are going to be taken to be forever in the arms of our Savior. That's why it is so important. He said, John, tell the church, write to my people, write to my servants what we are go they are going to go through. They are going to go through trials. They are going to be persecuted. They are going to be thrown into the arenas. They are going to be killed. But look, the one who keeps the faith he, the one who keeps his crown, the one who keeps his name written in the book of life, this one who have been preserved will be preserved from the eternal death, and that's what the Lord has for us. The crown that the Lord has given us is this: the preservation of uh, an eternal death away from God. That's what Jesus said. Who has an ear? let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And that's why we who are studying the Word of God, we who are concerned about this, are concerned so that you may absorb this and that you may live this and that you may have the Word of God etched, marked in your heart so that the Word of God may cause you to be a different person and that the Word of God may cause you to be a better person a better servant, a better father, a better son, because the Word of God, because the Word of God generates this in us, generates the transformation. The Word of God needs to cause a transformation in your life. There's no other way. That's why the Lord calls us tonight. He's inviting you so that you may have a, this experience with the Lord Jesus. We don't know what you are expecting from God. We don't know how you uh, perceive the person of Jesus. I don't know how you believe in God. I don't know what is your creed and what you think about Jesus. But there is one thing. The Word of God speaks clearly that Jesus is victorious. And that Jesus, yes, can reveal himself to you and give to you what you need the most. Not only goods for this life. Like someone prayed here, Lord, bless my mom so that she may have a job. Yes, he didn't ask for money, ask for work. 
he has for a good job for his father because man needs to have his own experience with the Lord we leave off of, off of experiences the church lives on the dependency of God and the fact that we are here tonight is exactly because of this so that our intimacy with God and our, our experience with God because so that what we have received from God which is our crown may remain identifying each one of us and that God when he looks to to hear to this church when God he looks to whatever you are he may see a, a, on your head your crown this thing that stands you out that's what identify the Son of God in this world in the midst of this world in which we live that's what give us this assurance this guarantee that we are in the right path and we are getting ready to hear our names being called when we will be forever in the arms of our Savior. My brother, may the Lord bless us. May the Lord speak to us directly. We're going to sing a song and you are at this moment. Maybe, I don't know what you're going through, what you're feeling, what is the situation of our life how you are today but John he was here in, in the, one of the most difficult moments of his life but at the same time those became some of the most happy moments because at that moment John had the revelation and the assurance that he was not alone that his friend Jesus was with him and that salvation was with him and that eternal life was with him and that everything that he had experienced all the suffering not did not remain here but gave him better means to become a servant faithful to our God and you tonight you're going to while well, the group sings a song you're going to be speaking with the Lord asking the Lord for an experience asking the Lord at this moment that he may act on to your behalf
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blood to Jesus. The only way for man to go to heaven is when man hears and give heed to what the Holy Spirit is telling to him. Tonight, the Lord is calling you so that you may have an experience with the voice of God. The experience that we need not to be connected to a religious institution or following a leader, no. The experience that we need, that you need, is to have the same experience that John had. It's to be able to hear the voice of Jesus. It's to see your name, being, to hear your name being called. You're gonna do it just like John did. And this happens when God surround you when God put a stamp on you when God takes you out of the world you're going to fall on your knees at, at the feet of Jesus and you'll be able to see that Jesus is present and Jesus has always been present and that's the only assurance that we have the only way for you to see the new Jerusalem is for you to give heed to the voice of the Holy Spirit is that you apply this in your life amen nothing else nothing of this life culture teaching education none of this can lead man to live in the presence of God the only thing that leads man to live in the presence of God eternally is to have an experience of salvation with Jesus the way for you to preserve this, the way for you to maintain your crown, to maintain your ex living experience with Jesus, is to give heed to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite the church to stand up. And that's the teaching that the Lord has for us tonight. Jesus is love. Jesus is everything for us. God is everything that man needs. God is love. God is mercy. It's grace. But also God is justice. What is written, what is being prophesied, what has been determined, what is written, will happen. The same judgment, death to the ones who are away from God, it also a judgment, a blessing to his people. Amen. May this word may touch your heart. And that the Holy Spirit tonight may transform your life. Transform your understanding. And give to you this assurance. And the condition for you to fall at the feet of Jesus. And accepting him tonight as the Savior of our life. Amen.
Glory to God. Bless be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord has shown as we were praying for the service tonight. The Lord has shown a man right here. He's trying in many ways to uh, get ready because of the rumors of everything that he hears about the end of times. And what confirms the possibility of the return of the Lord Jesus. The event that he in part does not know he does not have complete understanding of this when is going to happen why is it going to happen but now the Lord is speaking to him directly that you need to surrender to God's feet the only way for man to get ready is to surrender to God's feet the persecution upon the church lasted the first four centuries but the more the church was persecuted everything that the Lord has revealed to John everything that was related to the church everything that had been prof prophesied has been fulfilled and is being fulfilled to this day and but the more the world oppresses the church the more the the world is trying to steal our crown the more we are stronger in the Lord the more the church is closer to Jesus. What is precious to us is exactly this, is to know that we are close to our God, that we are like John, loved by the Lord, beloved by the Lord, protected by the Lord, cared by the Lord. And now the Lord wants you to be like John, and that you may have this experience with the Lord. Amen. Let's pray, bring, bring it to a close. And you will, after the prayer, if you desire, we want to pray for you. We we'll want you to live with this assurance. And that with your experience and with the stamp of the Holy Spirit, the mark of the Holy Spirit in your heart. Lord, receive our service in adoration to your name. And we praise you, Lord, because in truth, we have not been deceived. We are not being deceived, Lord. We are not being let down, but we receive everything that we need. Our word protect us. Our word strengthen our steps. Your word gives us what we need. And what we need is the safe direction. So so that we remain in your presence and this Lord is the reason why we are here because we want to give you our gratitude our praise our adoration to your name and to express how much we are happy in your presence Lord receive this service and prepare our lives for this coming week that is beginning giving us Lord the protection and the help that comes from above. 
send your angels to minister in our behalf. As I pray that we say, I'm really thankful. In the name of Jesus, amen. And your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. Once again, seated. This week we are praying so that the Lord may be continue to operate. Our, this, our coming service is going to be in the church. It's going to be a study of the Word. So get ready so that we may be here once again studying the Word of God. Amen. Saturday we're going to have an event with the praise group, right? The praise group. It's going to be a seminar with the praise group. We're going to share with you the details so that you may be ready, so that we may all be here together participating on this meeting for the praise group and the instrumentalists. Amen. Anything else? Pastor Sabado? Pastor Wayne? Amen. The Dickens? No. So, want to send you away the peace of the Lord Jesus.